Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I want to talk about The Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister. So I think this is probably going to be a relatively quick chatty video, but I thought it might be nice to have a video just talking about The Secret Diaries of Anne Lister because I have found reading her diaries or volume one of her diaries at least absolutely fascinating. Um, and this has definitely been my highlight of Jane Austen July this year. I know I have spoken about these diaries quite a lot um, in my Jane Austen July vlogs already, but I thought um, one, it might be nice to put all my kind of thoughts together um, in one video. And also I was going to try and do a um, deep dive character study um, um, a let's talk about video on Isabella Thorpe from Northanger Abbey this week but I just don't have time to do another um, sort of long form video this Jane Austen July. Between my video on R.J. Austen's novels love stories and my let's talk about Willoughby video um, both of those took about like two hours to film and about like four or five hours to edit each and I've just like completely run out of time to do another long form video this Jane Austen July so we're just gonna instead have a relatively quick chat about The Secret Diaries of Anne Lister um, which were fascinating. Um, so I've been meaning to read The Secret Diaries of Anne Lister for ages um, and finally picked up volume one in Jane Austen July. I'm really excited to read volume two um, later on this year. So just a bit of background before I start talking about the diaries. Um, Anne Lister was born in 1791 and died in 1840. Um, so she was a woman living in the early 19th century um, and she was part of the upper classes. In her younger years she spent a lot of time living with her aunt and uncle who were wealthy landowners um, near Halifax in Yorkshire um, and I think later on in life um, she inherited their property um, but I'm not 100% certain about that because I've only read the first volumes of her diaries. Um, so this edition I have here is edited by Helena Whitbread um, and spans from 1816 to um, 1824 and then I believe the next volume, volume two of her diary spans from 1824 to 1841. So this isn't like every single thing that Anne wrote between um, 1816 and 1824 but it is a lot of it and Helena Whitbread has kind of like selected um, the most interesting entries um, and also added um, context. So there's a really good introduction and then sometimes between diary entries um, Helena Whitbread will kind of uh, have a sort of um, few paragraphs explaining what Anne was doing in her life at this time or what was happening around this time. Anne Lister throughout her life kept long detailed um, journals and diaries documenting her everyday life, um, her personal relationships um, and much more. And when Anne Lister was writing these diaries um, throughout her life, she wrote some of them, um, you know, in longhand just using the English alphabet um, but she also wrote quite a lot of her diaries in code a sort of code that was a mixture of Greek alphabet letters and various other symbols and many years after her death her diaries were decoded um, a couple of times I won't go into all of the history of that but it was discovered later on by decoding Anne's diary and um, that one of the reasons why she had written a lot of her diary in code was because she was a lesbian and she was having lots of relationships with women um, and when she was documenting her relationships with women she wrote about them in code because obviously that wasn't exactly accepted by society at the time. Reading Anne Lister's diaries is absolutely fascinating for so many reasons. Um, so many reasons. So I guess really what I wanted to do today is sort of tell you why I think you should read Anne Lister's diaries. I'm someone who has read quite a lot of 18th and 19th century diaries before. Um, I studied history at university and I also write historical fiction. So, you know, I spend a lot of time doing um, primary source historical research, which often involves reading diaries. And I've read quite a lot of other diaries from the 19th century. And Anne Lister's diaries are so much more interesting than every other diary I've ever read. I think there's lots of reasons why Anne Lister's diaries are quite interesting. Um, I think one of the reasons why they're quite interesting is that Anne Lister was a very good writer. Um, like they're really well written. Anne Lister loved to read and she loved to study and she loved books. And she sort of had some like literary ambition. She kind of took her journal very seriously. So I think in that sense, like reading her diaries is more engaging than reading a lot of 19th century diaries because um, Anne Lister wrote them really well. Uh, whereas a lot of other 19th century diaries are not so interesting in terms of the writing. I also do think they've been edited very well by Helena Whitbread. Like, I'm sure there are some very dry <laughs> entries which Helena Whitbread didn't include. Whereas like a lot of the other 19th century diaries I've read, I've read like, you know, at the British Library and stuff like that, which have been published like fully for academic purposes. Whereas this has been published in a slightly more commercial way. So I do feel like Helena Whitbread has chosen the extracts to include carefully. Also, because Anne Lister wrote her diary in code, I think she is much 
much more like frank and emotional with her diary than a lot of other people were who were writing diaries in the 19th century. Writing a diary in the 19th century as a woman was considered, you know, it was almost like one of the accomplishments. It was something that you did to kind of like practice your writing. So a lot of women who were writing diaries in the 19th century weren't necessarily writing them in like a really personal way. They maybe would have been like expecting that other people might read them or they kind of weren't writing like really private thoughts in them. This reminds me actually like a while ago I was reading um a diary from the early Victorian period as historical research um, and the person who was writing the diary was pregnant but um, the woman obviously didn't want to write down in the diary that she was pregnant whether because she felt it was too private or because she was a bit sort of superstitious about it I don't know but I remember thinking it really interesting that like this was this massive thing that was clearly happening in this woman's life um, and you know several months down the line when the baby was born she did talk about it but she obviously didn't feel like she could write about it in her diary um, which is kind of fascinating anyway that's the tangent. I said this video wasn't going to be horrendously long. Anyway, because Anne Lister wrote her diary in code, she is really, really, really confessional with it. Um, and she goes into a lot of detail about her personal relationships, about her feelings, about her emotions, about her loneliness, um, about her expenditure and like her clothing and all of that kind of stuff. It's really interesting actually to see what Anne Lister chooses to write in code and what she writes in longhand. Because the things she writes in code um, do tend to often be things about her romantic relationships with women, where, you know, it's really obvious is why she wrote that in code but there's also quite a lot of stuff about like her clothing and her expenditure which she writes in code because she obviously felt that like her money and her clothing was sort of private um which i find really interesting and Lissa's diaries are really interesting to read because they are more sort of intimate because she was writing them in code she was really really sharing her emotions and i do feel like reading and Lissa's diaries i have such a strong strong sense of her as a person um like i have such a strong sense of her personality in the way that i have never got from reading people's diaries in the past before um like usually i get a sense of like historical stuff from reading diaries in the past which is why i read them but like i've never got such a strong impression of a person before as i do here you just i just feel like i know Anne lister which obviously i don't but like you do get such like a personal experience reading these i guess and then the other thing that makes Anne lister's diaries an absolute joy and fascination to read is that they're absolutely fascinating in terms of social history um some of the most interesting things i've ever read in terms of learning about social history for lots of different reasons um obviously Anne lister is a really important kind of figure in lgbtq plus history she was a queer woman living in the early 19th century who was having relationships with women who was writing about those relationships in her diaries and also who was someone who had a real awareness of herself as a woman who liked women and that was sort of part of her identity which i think is really important because i think often um when we look at queer history as historians people are always quite wary to sort of put labels on people in the past and people are often saying you know well people in the past may have had relationships with people of the same gender as them but they might not have understood it in the same way in the same terms or whatever but like if you read Alice's diaries she very clearly feels that it is part of her identity that she is a woman who likes women and that she always has done um, and that that is like part of her nature I'm just going to read a little bit from one of Anne's diaries where um, she has been talking to um, a friend of hers about the fact that she likes women. And this is what she says. I urged in my own defence the strength of natural feeling and instinct, for so I might call it, as I had always had the same turn from infancy, that it had been known to me, as it were, by inclination, that I had never varied and no effort on my part had been able to counteract it, that the girls liked me and had always liked me, that I had never been refused by anyone, and that, without attempting to account for the thing, I hoped it might, under such circumstances, be excused. In her diaries, Anne Lister writes frankly about her romantic and sexual relationships with with women um particularly documenting her sort of on and off relationship with a woman who she usually refers to just as m before um these diaries start sort of when anne was in her early 20s i think um she and m had a relationship um after which m married a man um and anne struggled with this for a long time and one of the things that i find like really really moving in um, Anne Lister's diaries is anne writing about her relationship with m and her 
struggle with the fact that M has married and then later her and M sort of um, still have an on and off relationship but then after you know a visit is over M goes back to her husband and, and Anne is really really lonely and Anne is sort of waiting for M's husband to die so that they can be together like I said it's a really really emotional reading experience because Anne writes a lot in her diaries about her loneliness and her longing for a companion um, and there's several other women who she kind of has sort of relationships with or who she has flirtations with um, and we kind of get to learn more about that and in terms of queer history and Mrs Diaries are just absolutely fascinating. I think going into reading Anne Liss's diaries um, that was sort of the element of her diaries I was expecting to find sort of the most interesting um, and I did find it absolutely fascinating but I also found her diaries absolutely fascinating in terms of class um, because Anne Lister was just a massive snob and there's so many points in the book where she's like oh that person's so vulgar I'm gonna cut them I don't want to hang out with them anymore um, because I don't like them like um, she reminded me um, as I think I said in one of my Jane Austen's live vlogs I feel like she reminded me so much of Emma Woodhouse from Jane Austen's Emma um, in that she has like you know lots of um, strong opinions about who is good enough for her society or not there's a period of sort of seven months in her diary where um, she's sort of got a crush on a young woman called Miss Brown who she's met at the library um, but Miss Brown is of a slightly lower class than her um, and Anne isn't really sure if she wants to be involved with Miss Brown because of this she meets Miss Brown at the library and goes on walks with her but she won't go and visit her mother because she thinks her mother's going to be really vulgar and the intricacies and complexities of class in the early 19th century are so fascinatingly documented in Anne Lissa's diaries um, and again because she's writing code she's very upfront about how she feels about everyone and there's so many people who she just dismisses as being vulgar um, and sort of not refined enough for her um, including her own father again sort of reminded me of Jane Austen of sort of how Elizabeth and Jane sometimes feel about Mrs Bennet in Pride and Prejudice at one point she goes away with her father and is really concerned um, that someone might meet them um, and judge her for being with her father because he's such a vulgar person and um, that's the word she uses all the time so <laughs> that's the word I'm using here um, and it's absolutely fascinating and I feel like if you are someone who reads Jane Austen or you're interested in Jane Austen then the class stuff in Anne Lister's diaries is truly fascinating because it shows you so well all the complexities and the little like gradations of class um, and class hierarchy in the early 19th century in such a fascinating way and I also found it really interesting reading her diaries because um, that element of Anne's personality doesn't um, endear me towards her very much but also um, her loneliness um, and at times her unhappiness um, her relationships and her sort of deep longing for love um, and also her love of books and her love of reading and studying which comes through throughout the book um, those things all made me really like Anne so I found reading it like a really interesting you know illustration of the complexity of humanity I suppose um, and also like I said in terms of social history absolutely fascinating you know there are so many little details of everyday life that are absolutely fascinating to read about in Anne diaries um, and I do think if you like Jane Austen and you like reading Jane Austen's books you'll find a lot of things which are really interesting um, to see kind of reflected in um, Anne Lister's diaries which will show you how like, well Jane Austen documented everyday life I suppose um, and yeah I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have to say about Anne Lister's diaries like I said I tabbed so many things um, and I found it absolutely fascinating in so many ways and you know despite the fact that Anne Lister was definitely very much a snob um, I also really really liked her um, and I do feel like I got to know her um yeah it's very weird reading diaries from the past um especially you know obviously Anne Lister wrote these in a code she didn't want anyone to read them um but this was a very long time ago and they're such wonderful historical sources um and I also feel like because she did have sort of like literary ambitions in some ways or like um, she thought of herself as a writer. Maybe, maybe Anne Lister would have liked the idea that people would be reading her words and getting something out of them. Maybe she would be kind of glad, or maybe she would be absolutely horrified to know that people were reading about her private life. I don't know. Basically, The Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister, um, volume one, one of the most interesting things I've ever read. Um, possibly my favourite thing I've read so far this year, or definitely up there. Um, it's quite hard to compare diaries with novels, but this was truly fascinating. I'm going to get hold of volume two very soon and I'm looking forward to reading it and yeah I highly highly recommend reading The Secret Diaries of Anne Lister they're absolutely amazing I thought this video was done but I have one other thing to say which is that the reading experience of this um obviously I was tabbing stuff and I was making notes but actually like 
I felt so like swept up in the story of Anne's life um, that it did feel like reading a novel in places. Um, it did feel like reading a queer Jane Austen. And I did feel like I got to know like all of the um, intricacies of all the people around her and stuff like that. So this was both like a massively satisfying read for the historian in me, but also for like the reader in me. It was a really, really enjoyable reading experience. And yeah, basically I highly recommend this. This was amazing. That's all I wanted to say. Um, this video has already been longer than I anticipated. Anyway, let me know down in the comments, have you read Alyssa's Diaries? Would you like to? Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Thank you.